Jack, the Neil owner with 23 Neils, to talk a little bit about U.S. expansion. Uh, let's ask him what he thinks about U.S. expansion. Those naysayers that wrote those articles saying that Neil won't expand to the U.S., don't listen to them. Whoever wrote those articles, they're not Neil owners. I'm a Neil owner. This is my car right here. Neil user navigator, man. So don't read those naysayer articles. They don't know what they're talking about. Neil is 100% going to expand to the U.S. No question about that. Of course they are going to expand to the US. And I'll tell you the timeline of the expansion and how they're going to expand in the US. As recall, when Neil IPO'd, they said they were going to expand to the US by 2020. Of course, that was a bit too optimistic and we did not expand to the US in 2020. But they have changed their plans to have NT 1.0 cars like my car, my EC6, and all these NT 1.0 cars to be exclusive, pretty much exclusive for China, and then also test it out uh, with Norway and Europe. And primarily, NT 2.0 cars were for China and Europe. And then NT 3.0 cars will be for China, Europe, and North America. So that's the plan right there, guys. So that does mean if you really want some of the NT 2.0 cars like this beautiful EC7, you guys will have to wait until NT 3.0 cars. Now, of course, there's going to be some hurdles to overcome when entering the US. And this seems to be the topic of concern for most people, regulatory hurdles. The purpose of NEO was to get NEO cars into US and have swap stations into US and become a global brand. Of course, these regulatory hurdles means that Neil will probably have to build a factory in North America because import taxes are very expensive for uh, goods that are shipped over to America. And also, in order to not get sanctioned, Neil will probably have to build their own factory, right? Build their own factory and also create jobs and sort of, in a sense, become independent from uh, the Chinese operation over here. Neil is definitely going to become a next trillion dollar company. They are going to be the Apple of China with their phones and all sorts of ecosystem products. However, after what they learned about Huawei and watching Huawei get essentially canceled in the US, banned completely, they can't even use Google's operating system. It's so sad. I used to own a Huawei phone and uh, I, can't even, I, I can't even install YouTube and it was really hard. I managed to install YouTube, but I can't log in. It was just really painful. And Neil anticipates that there will be sanctions potentially coming for them as well. That's why they are developing things in-house. That's why they're spending billions and billions of dollars on R&D to develop their own chips, develop everything in-house, so that in the event that they do get sanctioned in the future, for example, uh, NVIDIA isn't allowed to work with Neo, well, Neo's got their own chips that they've been working on for a while. So they always got that backup plan installed. Neo 100% want to and will expand to the US. There's no question about that. It is just a matter of time when things are gonna get ready. Those of you guys worried that Neo is in decline, the company's not doing that well, uh, they're, they're, you guys think that Neo is going downhill. Guys, the truth is far from that. It is the exact opposite. Renew right now is doing better than they ever were. So many customers in the store, so many orders being placed down right now. It is absolutely insane. People absolutely love the brand, they love the company. And Neo is taking massive market share away from other guys. It doesn't exist a future where Neo isn't in the US. So how will expansion in the US look like? Well, first, of course, they would have to take over California and also New York start there get uh new houses and some swap stations there get at least one swap station in every big city and then move on forward from there of course this is going to cost a lot of money there might be more rounds of shareholder dilution in the future for expansion but this is also sort of like uh tesla's early days all right you guys think about tesla right now what they're doing how well they're selling and also just uh their reach, Neo was gonna get there 100%. And it's very, you, you guys gotta understand, even right now in China, a lot of people still don't know about Neo. They only know about Tesla. But as people, more and more people know about Neo, know about uh, Neo's battery swap stations, know about new houses, then 
you know, sales are absolutely going to explode here in China. And also, as the word gets out and you guys spread the word as well, people know about Neo in the U.S., there's going to be a lot of people. And I know you guys personally also waiting for a Neo to come to the U.S. to buy a Neo there. And I asked a couple of uh, Neo uh, sales reps and also managers, and they said, of course, Neo is going to go to the U.S. The goal has always been to go to the U.S. They cannot rest until they've achieved that goal. You think the future will go to the U.S.? I personally think it will, because I think the U.S. is the most open country in the world. But the last year, maybe some of the companies have some weaknesses in the hand. But I hope it will go to the U.S. I think the future of the U.S. is very good for the user. We look at the user's point of view. We look at the user's point of view. 我觉得它确实有很多地方颠覆了我们传统汽油车，它是真正意义上颠覆，不是简简单单的。然后功能上的这种便利性啊，我觉得在欧洲的用户可能反馈也都是不错的。对，啊，希望它能尽早的进入美国市场，也能让大家能够，美国的朋友们、美国的车友们也能享受上这么一个好的一个智能型产品。我们毕竟世界大同嘛，我们都是作为一个，呃，我们全世界的这个这个我地球人来讲，我希望。我没有战乱，都是和平。然后我也希望我们能够有好的资源、好的这个，呃，东西吧，大家都能共享，这是最好的。啊，实际上来讲，你看，看经理们，这么多人都在看车。然后这两个月，未来在国内的销售，反正也是非常好。非常好。对。中国，我觉得，呃，可能在中国的市场上来说，未来的车相对来讲也算是豪华车，对，非常棒的车。然后售价也确实相对贵，但是也有很多的老百姓。在中国的市场上，它本身是可以跟，呃，我们传统的奔驰、宝马、奥迪这几个品牌是价格几乎是旗鼓相当的，但是同样他们也会去选择了这个未来这款车。这个市市场占比率，我看未来现在都都三分之一以上了都，都对吧？豪华电动这个这个地方。未来在美国已经有总部了，对,对吧？加加州这边、啊，你觉得要是去美国的话，他们会先去哪个地方？先加州吗？嗯、我觉得应该是，应该是加州。加州对，加州包括就是，我觉得像圣何塞，就是本身它是在那边嘛。然后我觉得，对对对我觉得他应该在那边，可能大家就也比较容易，西海岸的人也比较容易接受新鲜事物啊。对，我觉得在那边也，在美国内部可能也算算是比较潮流的引领的地方，是吧？对对对。啊，因为就是这个。就是就比如说演娱乐圈是吧？啊，好莱坞对吧？都在都在那边。有钱人都在那边。哎，对了，我觉得就一个是有钱，<笑>一个是这个思维比较呃新颖，所以他们更容易接受新新事物。嗯，我。你觉得那个换电在美国会很成功吗？嗯，换电，我认为这种方式是一种让我们从作为用户的角度有两个点，一个点呢就是我们的补能无限接近于汽油车的补能方式。第二呢，一个点呢就是我们作为用户。呃，我们不用考虑车主这个车上那块电池，它本身是车上可能作为电动车来讲，来讲成本非常高，然后问题或者说衰减，这个电池衰减嘛，这种问题非常大的这么一个最关键的零部件，我们不用考虑了。那其实换电是对于用户来讲非常好的事情，那就是看政府、看整个行业怎么推动换电，只要是大家都能认知到好的时候，我认为它是有非常好的前景。我也希望。美国政府能给支持，让让他多建点换电站。<笑>最后一个问题啊，你觉得要是未来去了美国的话，啊，需要不需要在美国建个工厂？我觉得可以建啊，没有问题啊，因为美国的市场非常大呀、啊，而且美国到欧洲的这个交交运的便利度也比在也比在中国要好很多吧。我觉得完全可以建、啊，而且在。某种角度来讲，我觉得就是把零部件运过去的成本和跟整车到那边的成本来讲，我觉得肯定是零部件过去以后在当地组装的话，呃，从用户的角度来讲，成本更低嘛。那我希望我们作为老百姓，作为普通的用户啊，作为一个买车的人，那肯定希望所有人都花的越少的钱，享受越好的东西嘛。啊<笑>